Welcome into this Tuesday edition of the Recruiting Breakdown. My name is Jerry Hamilton, joined by CJ Vogel. We're going to start doing some of these live a little bit more from time to time. Uh, today, we're sponsored, as always, by Mark Saunders. Uh, before, so before we get to uh, everything we're going to talk about, I want to take a second for Mark Saunders, a uh, friend of the program, Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders. Uh, when it comes to protecting all your stuff, wouldn't it be great to have one place that protects it all? Here's some good news. Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders is the only insurance agent you'll need to help keep tabs on protection for all your stuff. That's everything from your home, your car, and boat to your motorcycle, RV, and even that ATV. Call Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders' office today at 512-218-8571. Again, Mark Saunders, friend of the program, Texas fans out there, give Mark Saunders uh, and his team a chance. They do great work. Are you in good hands with over 35 years of experience? You will be with Texas alum Mark Saunders. Again, give him a call today, 512-218-8571. All right, CJ, so we started to uh, do some of these live because recruiting's starting to really heat up again. Uh, we're up to 31 official visitors if we assume Chase, uh, if we assume Ethan Utley to D-Lyman out of Nashville makes a June 21st through 23rd official visit. We'll see what happens with his commitment coming up here in late March and then where things set after that. If he picks Tennessee, then will he actually make the official visit to Texas? But we're at 31 official visitors. And why that's key is yesterday we added a big one. We broke the news at ontexasfootball.com that Hayden Lowe out of Westlake Village, Oaks Christian, go to that wiki page. They've had some really good players come out of Oaks Christian. Hayden Lowe, four-star edge. Six four and a half, two hundred and forty pounds. Good arm length, good quickness. A lot of things to build on there as a player. He will be making an official visit June fourteenth through sixteenth. We were the first people to kind of mention him last week on the recruiting breakdown for Texas fans. Hey, keep an eye on this guy. He's another guy. I'd reached out to him, and, and he said he was still in contact with Texas. Uh, so Hayden Lowe is in fact very much in contact with Texas. He's visiting April sixth for the big official unofficial visit weekend. And then he's coming back June 14th through 16th for an official visit. Uh, you know, look, he's got Notre Dame, USC, UCLA. You're going to see Hayden Lowe here. All the uh, West Coast teams and, and, and your Midwest powers are recruiting Hayden Lowe. More of that power to speed guy. Uh, he, he had enters his senior season with 100 career tackles. He had two interceptions last year as well. He really flashes that upfield quickness. Sometimes when you don't expect it, bigger frame guy going to be 6'5, 270 one day. Uh, but uh, Hayden Lowe, CJ coming in, um, adds to the contingent of California prospects in 2025 that Texas has a real shot with. Yeah, especially on that June 14th through 16th weekend, which isn't going to be the biggest weekend as we've talked about. But of that group coming in, a number of them are from out of state, which I think is by design to get these guys a little bit more face time, one on one, uh, you know, interaction with the coaching staff, their position coaches, and obviously Steve Sarkeesian. So uh, this is by design, you know, getting these out of state guys here. Hayden Lowe, like you said, 6'4, 240, 245. Again, we'll continue to grow. And right now, Jerry, the thing that really stands out to me when watching these, these clips are. I mean, the kid knows how to get off the line of scrimmage. And I think that first that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's the yeah. thing. His butt's above his shoulders. So he's well coached. Most guys' shoulders are six inches above their butt in their stance in high school. This guy's actually in an athletic winning stance, to your yeah. point. Absolutely. And I think that is one of those things that you look at early on and you say, yeah, he's got a good base for his tools. We can mold them. We can kind of get him to where we want him to be. But already he's advanced and, you know, to a point where it's not going to take a lot of. Uh, fine tuning by the time he gets to camp is you can kind of get him ready and, and get him going. So I'm really interested because again, two, two trips to Texas over the next three months is really big, really key for this recruitment for Tyson to go out of state and snag a talented defensive end. Yeah. And we're going to be taking your questions. We're going to get hit on this. We're going to hit on Smith or Rogbo. We're going to talk about the Corey and more. Then we're going to get to your questions. Uh, that's what we're here for is to answer all you guys questions. We're here for you. Uh, the other uh, edge news, which was interesting again last night, I spoke with Smith Arogbo out of Hastings High, 6'5", 215. He's on that Zena Umeo Zulu frame type, uh, big feet. He's not as far along physically as Zena was. Of course, Zeno had Neto, a brother, two years older in the recruiting process and works out up in McKinney with one, that those great that great staff up there uh, that does a great job. We had uh, 
uh, one of them on uh, Coffee and Football recently. Uh, but Smith the Rogbo, a guy that Jeff Banks offered when he went by Hastings uh, January 22nd. The crazy thing about his recruitment is he was an unknown starting his junior year. He had a couple offers, maybe one before the season actually began, maybe two. He's now up to 30. Uh, so he's an upside guy. He's kind of the opposite of Hayden Lowe on his huddle tape. Now Smith the Rogbo, really quick. And you see there, his first movement is stand up. He's not worried. He's young in football, okay? The Hastings staff does a good job, but he's still young in football. He is not as technically developed as Hayden Lowe. So what intrigues college coaches about this guy, that explosive first, second step get off. I mean, that's elite stuff. He's got the 80-plus inch wingspan. But wait until – those guys are looking at him. When we develop the frame and when we get him to fire off like a pass rusher, watch out. Uh, that's what you see there. Shoulder pads above the butt, the opposite of, of Hayden Lowe. That's a position. If your shoulder or above your butt, your first move's going to be up. You're going to play high. So he did, he's just now learning the game. When he learns to get those shoulders low and that butt eye, watch watch out what he can do off the snap rushing a football, uh, rushing a quarterback. So that's Smith or Ogbo, uh, big time. But you can't teach the quickness, the pursuit ability he has. Um, and no. He's a kid that plays hard. He's got all the offers. Um, you know, he's going to visit Oklahoma State, Nebraska, um, and, and USC is going to be involved in it as well. A&M's offered him. Oklahoma's offered him. Uh, so we'll see where this goes um, in, in, after this April 6th visit. It wouldn't shock me if he's not uh, a guy that makes an official visit to Texas. Uh, CJ, I wanted to move on to DeCorian Moore, though. I, um DeCorian Moore pretty much down to four schools. We know at the end of the day, and barring the unforeseen, and then in Iowa world it happens, it's just a Texas LSU. But there are really four schools at play here. Yeah, and it feels like this has been the common theme throughout his entire recruitment. Early on, it was Texas was a, a big player. They still are, obviously, but LSU was one of those schools to watch. When the commitment to LSU came, it was a bit of a surprise in the Texas corner. Uh, you know, I think moving forward for the rest of this recruitment, you can kind of ease out some of that noise from, uh, you know, the rest of the schools in this hunt and or Oregon, Ohio state, uh, USC, if they get back involved, any of the Florida schools right now, it is going to be a Texas and LSU fight to the finish. And it is going to be one of those, uh, one of those recruitments that no matter where this is verbally from DeCorian Moore, it won't matter until that pen ev eventually meets paper because you know, Texas will not stop recruiting this, uh, this wide receiver, this five-star guy, until he is putting his signature on an NLI somewhere uh, at, at Duncanville High School. So right now, again, LSU, Texas for the time being, and it, it, regardless of the noise that comes outside uh, from anywhere else, those are the two teams to watch. Yeah, and look, Ohio State obviously has Brian Hartline, the great uh, uh, receiver core that they've had in years past up there, and those guys highly draft a couple of Texans as well, which is the selling point for Brian Hartline coming down to Texas. And then there's Oregon, right? <laughs> Or Dan Lanning, he personally recruits a lot of kids in Texas. Uh, so Oregon is uh, uh, their player in the NIL game uh, as well. So those are your four schools. And I can say this, even if the Corian were to flip to Texas in July or August, LSU's not going to stop recruiting him either, right? right? So, and they're special. That's special guy right there. I mean, um, I mean that that's the bottom line. Is we can watch these highlights all day. He's the he look. He's the fastest receiver that played on the SMU field this year. Period. Okay. Yeah. So. That, and the best, okay? So just know that's how good the Corey and Moore is. He's better than the rest. Um, hey, Jerry, I got a question for you. That um, we, We've seen some comments in the chat. Looks like DeCorian's pretty locked in, right? Over the weekend, he sent out some pro LSU uh, tweets. You know, he was kind of, you know, retweeting his own commitment to LSU, saying, don't forget, you know, I am still committed to LSU. With LSU getting off to a pretty fast, quick start with some notable guys in this class, you know, you talk about Bryce Underwood, Raheem Delane, or, uh, sorry, uh, Harlan Berry is who I'm thinking about, um, and then Jabor Antoine. I mean, you get this class really, really going, getting some nice, you know, pieces in that five star category. How much of it, it right now is it? Yeah, I want to be a part of this big class because of the names that they've added. Versus, you know, I liked where I am with LSU and they won me over fair and square. Is there a, a, a kind of a, a bit of instinct there for you? Yeah, I, I think. Um... You know, I, I'm not sure instinct-wise on that, but I, I think LSU's receivers had a great year, right? And um, he committed early. And, look, it's not the typical uh, 
commitment video of a five star that sticks. I'll say that. That's not likely his last commitment video, even if he ends up recommitting to LSU. That's not normally how a five star guy has his one and only uh, commitment uh, video. So I'm going to leave that there. Uh, but I think the receiver cores at, at LSU uh, it has helped them. I think obviously Jaden Daniels won the Heisman. So they had a lot going on offensively uh, with that group. Caden Durham obviously going to LSU. Um, you have the guys in that class that are really trying to, uh, you know, put that friendly uh, pressure on the Corian Moore. Uh, but the reality here is, look, a lot of family ties to UT. Mom's from Austin. Um, and, and we know NIL is going to be a real factor in this recruitment down the stretch. So we'll see which way it goes. But uh, I, I can tell you this. I mean, how how invested is Sark and uh, his staff on, on the Corian Moore? They flat out told the high school coach. Uh, that's the head coach of another top receiver Texas is recruiting that the Corian Moore's one they're going to recruit uh, until the ink is dry. And I don't think there's ink anymore, but you know, the same. Uh, so there you go. Uh, David Keith Williams, get your, he's been asking now, David Keith Williams has been asking for the live uh, recruiting chat. So a program uh, as a program and consider a great, as great a receiver as the Corian Moore is, uh, do you think both his commitment would be more significant than getting both Brandon Brown and Zion Williams? I do not. Okay. I don't either. I, I love the Corey. That's a great question. I love the Corey and more. I thought he was the best receiver in Texas period last year. Any class didn't matter. Um, yeah. He's just a different cat, but now Brandon Brown and Zion Williams together. And look, I think Zion's a good over the player, over the ball player. Um, I think he's got to continue to develop that nasty streak on the defensive line. And I think he will over time. Brandon Brown, I think, is a difference maker. <clears throat> but you yeah. put the two of those guys together, and it's more valuable than a five-star wide receiver. I, I, I think that's where Texas is at right now. I think that's a great question. And I also think uh, it, outside of high school recruiting, where has Texas proven already that they can go out and get big-time talented players? Wide receiver. So if you do miss a, your five-star guy out of high school at the wide receiver position, well, look no further than where Texas has added a number of guys out of the transfer portal. Three, in fact, this past offseason to that wide receiver spot, all of which with high production, high talent. And uh, we've yet to see that necessarily on the defensive line. They've added nice pieces, Trill Carter and obviously Savea as well. But you wouldn't necessarily consider them to be in that five star category that we're currently seeing, uh, you know, them uh, attract out of the portal for, for the wide receiver spot. Yeah, Decorian, uh, UT boys, correct. Decorian grew up with about 30 kids on UT's roster. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, Jordan Johnson Rebel, the family's really good friends, right? They all, a lot of these guys did grow up playing in those youth football, even basketball leagues together. Um, and that's been kind of part, that's been big in the Texas resurgence on the field is Steve Sarkeesian, Jeff Banks. Jeff Banks' idea to hire Chris Gilbert. Um, so Banks needs to always get credit for that. Uh, that's Banks' years and years of recruiting in Texas, DFW. Uh, but that's been really been big in the resurgence for Texas is winning those key big battles in DFW. And uh, obviously, um, caught, we're beating LSU for Colin Simmons, who was definitely an LSU lean. Um, yeah. it, it beating LSU for Colin Simmons was another big one. Anthony Hill, Malik Muhammad. You just kind of go down the list. And this year, it is DeCorian Moore and Mike Vasusi. Uh, at Louisville, and but Fasusi's kind of removed from what UT boys talking about. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of big time guys in Dallas, and you got to keep winning Dallas because everybody in the country is coming in there. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, keeping that nucleus of Dallas talent together. I mean, it's starting to pay off already. Uh, Smaj Burrell on an Instagram live the other day after practice or after a workout, and I mean, it, it felt like the the kids in the locker room had about a five to ten to fifteen minute dance battle going on. I mean, the vibes were high, the music was bumping, the kids were jumping around, and the guys that were involved with it were all Dallas based. You know, it was Trey Wisner, John Faye Cook, DJ Campbell, Savion Red was hopping in. I mean, you could tell that there was, you yeah. know, a, a joy, and a lot of that stemmed from those guys that were big recruiting wins at the time from the DFW area. Yeah, uh, Greg Jackson, where does Texas stand right now with Jackson Christian from PNG? Good question. So Jackson is coming in on that June 21st through 23rd weekend uh, for a big official visit weekend for Texas, uh, which will end up with 25, 25-ish type guy number of guys visiting. He's at AM the 14th through 16th. I really think right now we'll see if anybody else comes in that's going to be a factor uh, in the spring evaluation period and pushes for June official. But right now, <clears throat> those are your two teams for Jackson, uh, Christian. I really believe that's where his decision will come from. 
lot of pressure on AM to win some of these offensive line battles. Uh, at Texas was the first offer. Sarkeesian was through the school. Kyle Floods maintained contact. Jackson's been on campus three or four times since being offered uh, by Texas. He's very familiar with Kyle Flood, the Texas program. Um, so I, I, I would I would place Texas a little ahead of AM right now, but a lot of this is going to come down to who pushes the hardest for who. Because, I mean, there's some serious offensive line talent in Texas this year. Then Texas also has guys like John Mills from San Francisco saying they is coming in for an official visit June 14th through 16th. So there's the Devin Coleman, Jordan Coleman. By the way, if you didn't see coffee and football this morning, go watch that Marcus Hutchins, uh, the offensive line coach, former Texas Longhorn uh, at Cedar Hill, uh, the offensive line coach at Cedar Hill was on coffee and football this morning. Talked about Devin and Jordan, talked about going up against Colin Simmons and Alex January, and talked about his thoughts on Kyle Flood. So, but there's a lot of good offensive linemen in the state. Uh, I think Jackson Christian's right there with that uh, top group. Obviously, Fasusi is the top guy at offensive tackle. You have the Coleman twins, uh, two of the, the triplets, I should say, um, and, and, you know, an offensive guard tackle combo guys. Uh, Jordan Coleman is kind of like Jackson Christian is. So then you have Tyler Thomas at Dickinson. There's going to be 12, 13 guys officially visit Texas on the offensive line. Uh, yeah. And Jackson Christian's very much in that group. Yeah. <laughs> Out of that group now, we have about – we have nine locked in for official visits in the in the June period. Uh, what's interesting, though, we've talked time and time again, Jerry, about how loaded the in-state crop of offensive linemen are for the 2025 class. Right now you've got four guys out of state that are locked in uh, on the offensive line position. So it's going to be interesting. You know, there's a lot of guys still that you, Texas kind of has to figure out where they are in the pecking order. But, again, you get the idea that Texas isn't going to settle for just who is in state. It's happened time and time again, whether it be Brandon Baker a year ago. Texas is going to go find the best guys to play at any position uh, on, on their big board. Hey, Courtney Garcia, Jr., great question here. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm battling allergies. They're kicking my butt. Thoughts on defensive end edge with Jackson in the fold. Lance Jackson, uh, who Courtney Garcia is talking about. Uh, by, by the way, uh, Lufkin Panthers, go pack. Um, so Lance Jackson out of Pleasant Grove High. Um, Texas commitment, obviously his brother Landon Jackson's at Arkansas. So that'll be interesting uh, when Arkansas plays Texas this year. Landon, I, I was at Pleasant Grove. CJ put the video out of him running the uh, the sprint there. And uh, uh, Lance is quite the athlete at 6'5 and a half, 255, 260. He's throwing 95 off the mound as a right-handed pitcher. I actually need to check with him this week and see if he's at 96 or 97. He's getting into the danger zone for Steve Sarkeesian as a 6'5 guy off the mound. I'll say that as a junior in high school. But along with Lance, who's coming in the 21st through 23rd, Damian Shanklin out of Indianapolis, Warren Central. He's one of the longer shots that has a Texas official visit scheduled to me because he hasn't been on campus before. He's a considered a pretty big Notre Dame lean. He's going to be at Notre Dame spring game, probably another March visit. Uh, Marcus Freeman's been on him a long time, but Pete Kwiatkowski went by the schools putting in the fight yeah. uh, there, and, and Shanklin wants to see Texas. So the fact that he's coming in for an official visit is big for Texas, and it's one of those recruitments where, look, it'd be an upset win, but that's why you recruit nationally. Tennessee, I think, is the other school really to know in that one. Uh, and then Smith or Rogbo, then uh, Hayden Lowe, obviously. Uh, Kamoran Morgan, another guy that Texas keeps tabs on. They continue to recruit former Red Oak Edge, four-star edge, now at South Oak Cliff. Um, so there's a number of those guys, CJ, at edge position, and I think we're going to see a couple more guys pop up this spring during the spring evaluation period. Yeah, I would imagine so. And it's, you know, kind of the, one of those weird positions, I would say. It's not one of those guys. They're one of those spots that you see a lot of guys locked in for March or April visits so far. You know, you talk about the guys that are locked in for the official visits. Not many of them are making visits right beforehand. And so I think that's interesting when you consider who else is coming in from those other positions, whether it be offensive line, you know, the defensive line even, uh, with the number of guys that Kenny Baker is trying to get a move on as well. But uh, defensive end being a little quiet early on before March or before June really starts getting those fireworks going. But I'm a big fan of Lance Jackson. You keep him in the fold, you're able to mold him into what is eventually going to be about a 6'6 guy with extreme flexibility and bend off the edge. Who you can pair him with is going to be really important. I do know Kamar and Morgan had Texas in his top five after his January 20th junior day visit. Uh, it's been quite on his end. We have messages out to him right now to see just when he is expected to get back to Texas because I would be uh, very surprised if he did not make a return trip down to Austin. 
Uh, shook ones. How's Texas looking with Dorian Brew and Kelshawn Johnson? I spoke with Dorian Brew yesterday, as it turns out. He has Ohio State June 21st through 23rd official visit. That's what he said. Could these dates change? They could. That pretty much leaves Texas at June 14th through 16th. Um, he's going to be at Oregon this weekend. <clears throat> he's going to be at uh, Ohio State in April. He's going to be, says he's going to be at LSU spring game April 13th. That would leave Texas April 20th because Ohio State spring game is also 13th. That would leave the Texas spring game April 20th uh, or an April 6th weekend possible. We'll see how his visits shake out. I think Texas is one of the three main schools, unless Oregon really comes into this after the visit, <clears throat> is I think Ohio State, LSU, Texas. Obviously, his father was a track star at LSU and an Olympian, a bronze medal winner and silver medal winner. His mom is in the Ohio State Hall of Fame. So, uh, but Texas, I think, is right there knocking on the door. Kelshawn Johnson, I think Texas leads. It's just up for uh, uh, the Horns to make that final push. He's coming in June 14th through 16th, then scheduled to be at USC the 21st through 23rd. A&M will get an official visit as well. He likes Holman Wiggins. Uh, so that's where that's at. Ecamm, high school games in 24 that will attract the most college staffs to visit. That's an interesting question because that coaches don't have as many days on the road during the season with the new rule changes uh, in recruiting. So uh, that's interesting. Uh, but it's always more the guy, the games, you know, obviously DeSoto and Duncanville, depending on college schedules, will draw a lot of college coaches. But it's normally – those playoff games uh, that are big with the draw on the high school coaches uh, and the college coaches to high school games. But so much recruiting is done beforehand now uh, for the 25 class or your 24 class or the senior class, I should say, that these guys aren't on the road as much, especially right. now with the new bump rules being gone, that you can go have official visits in January, essentially, uh, in school, in home visits. I mean, it's I call I jokingly call it official visit. It's an official school visit. I mean, you're sitting down for an hour with a kid and a family. So I think you're going to see recruiting trend more and more to those uh, sort of things. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I was I was getting a little bit more surprised time and time again when we'd see the recruits uh, pose with Sarkeesian and whoever else joined him on those visits, and you'd see basically the whole family sitting behind them in front of the school's logo in the gym. That, that's going to be the new twist, as you mentioned, Jerry, And when it comes to recruiting. Again, the timeline is speeding up, which is something that I think coaches wow. – not to get into that that whole discussion about an earlier signing day, but this is one of those factors in which you're going to see guys push earlier and earlier to get them into the fold so they can focus more and more on the season when it comes around, especially with a 12-team playoff and how important those games will be when the time comes. Living rent-free in, uh, in UT. I got to get Pettijon and Barnes in the boat. Look, two big-time linebackers and a, a Mateo Tongai out of San Clemente, I think is tremendous as well. I think he is a tremendous prospect. I, so Texas has three elite linebackers in the country scheduled for official visits. Riley Pettijan, uh, June 14th through 16th. Uh, Matai Tangoe and uh, Elijah Barnes on the 21st through 23rd. I think that's when Anthony Williams will probably make his official visit to Texas as well. We'll see on Javar Thomas, Jonathan Cunningham, where Texas goes with those guys. Uh, here during a spring evaluation period and when those guys get on campus in April. Obviously, Javar Thomas will be on campus um, uh, March 22nd with the Night Ride as seven on a uh, seven team. Those guys will, in the California Power, Brandon, Brandon Brown, Josh Petty, offensive lineman from Atlanta. A lot of visitors on that 22nd day prior to seven on seven uh, tournament in Texas. So uh, big time linebackers. Uh, Texas set that up well, only taking one last year after five in the 23 class, one in 24. They knew the 25 class was really good at linebacker. They knew Pettijan and Barnes were two of the elites in the country. Um, and I think Texas is in a good spot for both. None of them, neither one are done deals, though. Uh, but yeah. Elijah Pettijan's recruitment went up about, oh, I don't know, 17 notches running 10.98 at FAT at uh, 210 pounds last week, by the way. Yeah, it sure did. He put on some really good tape at the Under Armour camp as well up in Dallas. Uh, Jerry, I wanted to get back to that March 22nd visit date because yep. Texas, we, we, we talked about how, you know, cycle by cycle, you see the trends in which Texas goes big in 22 or in the 23 cycle, excuse me, with the four or five linebackers. They only take one last year with Ty Anthony Smith. Now they're starting to get a hang of who is coming in uh, in the boat with the three official visits for 25 but they're already getting a nice little crack at what's to come in 26. And the, the guy that I wanted to mention coming in with uh, the Knight Rider 7-on-7 team is Kosio Pala, 
Um, really talented prospect out of Houston that will be coming in March 22nd. He's a guy who saw his stock really start blowing up a little bit more and more uh, in this early winter evaluation period. Has long, lengthy arms that we talk about being kind of one of those uh, – kind of talking points or selling points that we've seen from Johnny Nansen since his arrival here. And then Ty, Ty Young, uh King as well in yep. the Houston area. A lot of talent here coming in with this night right at 7-on-7 seven seven team. And, again, there's there's talent in the, the secondary. they got a solid quarterback as well. We know Texas is kind of going a national brand in 26, but uh, really, really important precursor for what's to come April 6th yep. and April 20th. I think Akpala, that Texas offer was the one he's always been waiting on. Um, so we'll see, you know, a long time to go on those guys, but totally agree that linebacker linebackers in 25 and 26 are on an uptick in Texas. That's good to see. Uh, Courtney Garcia Jr. Uh, appreciate the previous response. Where do we sit at safety with Delane, Jonah Williams, Reyes? Um, so that's any new guys he should add to his recruiting spreadsheet. I love that. And somebody <laughs> asked if Texas out with Jonah Williams. Look, I, I, maybe I need to check in with Jonah again, but I reported last week I spoke with Jonah Williams. He says he's coming in April 6 uh, for an unofficial visit and will officially visit again um, in, in June. So I think Jonah Williams, Texas has not given up on Jonah Williams. I know he's in Oklahoma lean headed into the spring, uh, but he says he's going to be on campus at Texas twice here. Um, so we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see where Texas moves on that one. Uh, he was at LSU over the weekend. Uh, A&M is going to be involved. But if Jonah Williams come, follows through and makes the April 6th visit and the June official visit, let's just see how things work out there. Some people have drawn the correlation from baseball, football um, to Taylor Tatum from Longview. But they're, they're in Tatum going to OU, there's a big difference there. Tatum, wrong or right, no matter what you thought about his tape or we thought or anybody spot, he wasn't a priority recruit for Texas. Okay? Jonah Williams is. So that's the big difference there. Um, so we'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, as far as safeties, uh, Fahim Delane visiting April 13th weekend. He's out of good counsel in Maryland. Look up that wiki page. They've had about five NFL guys, maybe six now, uh, after the draft this year. Ta uh, Jenkins from Michigan will be drafted out of a good counsel. Uh, he'll be the latest one. But he's coming in. I think Texas is going to end up with a good shot to get an official visit out of him. And then there's Major Preston out of IMG from Hopewell, Virginia. Uh, he has Virginia Tech scheduled, OV, maybe one other, but he's coming in April 13th with his family as well. So we'll see how much of a push Blake Gideon and Terry Joseph make there. Uh, Cade Phillips needs to be on the top of everybody's safety spreadsheet. Um, Cade Phillips at a high tower. Uh, you know, look, I, you know, I, I have about two or three of my favorite recruits every year. Um, and it's more than just a talent, it's just being around them. And Cade's kind of working on me now. Um, Cade is 6'2. Uh, six one and a half, six two without shoes on, 170, 180 pounds, 80 inch wingspan, okay, 10 inch hands, long jump 24 7 this year already. I mean, you start getting up to 25 feet as a junior and the long jump, and you're getting in the Roy Williams and Marquise Goodwin, and Marquise went beyond that. But that's the level you're getting at of an athlete that Texas has signed that long jump 25 feet or more in high school. Roy Williams, Odessa Permian, Marquise Goodwin, damn near an Olympian. So that tells you the type of athleticism Cade Phillips has, and he can play corner. I think safety is a good spot for him long term with that length and range, uh, but he's got the ball skills. So put him on your safety list for sure. Uh, he's big time. Um, so, uh, by the way, E. Kim, Isaiah Williams and Turn Time, the top two in Texas in 26. Great question. Turn Time's my number one. No offense to anybody else. I mean, just I, I put a thread on ontexasfootball.com with when I when we broke the news that turn time was coming in April 13th for a visit. And I put his sophomore video in the thread and I put Kelvin Banks' sophomore video in the thread because I think some people thought I was nuts saying turn time was better than Kelvin Banks at the same age. And that's not a knock on Banks. He's going to be a first rounder. It was just more a compliment to turn time. Just go watch those films back to back on texasfootball.com thread. John Turntine is an elite, elite, elite prospect. Isaiah Williams, the best thing I can say about the 2026 um, a safety out of Fort, Fort Bend Marshall, um, I was talking with uh, Josh McCushion, who covers OU. We've been friends for years, dating back to the Rivals.com days. And, and, I, and I said, the best way I can explain this, guys, this is what Alabama and Georgia's been playing with for the last decade, 15 years. <laughs> I mean, that's like the best compliment I can give a young prospect. That's what those guys have been kicking everybody's butt with. So Isaiah Williams is 
Really, really good. Cortland Guillory, UT boy, yes, as a safety is visiting um, June 7th through 9th. Caleb Chester for Fort Bend Marshall is a corner is visiting June 7th through 9th. Um, running back recruiting, CJ, I think is uh, interesting. We've had a, a, um, a Eric Metcalf before my time, yes, another one of those long jumpers. Um, but uh, running back recruiting is interesting. Um, you know, Jordan Davison said, I have an official visit date to sec Texas. I'm not releasing it yet. So we'll probably release all his together at some point, probably June 21st through 23rd. But we're not going to – we'll let Jordan announce that. Then you have Ricky Stewart coming in the 14th through 16th. Then a Kylan Deer, because we've had some questions. I wanted to lead into that at Equipment, Mississippi, and I will go by to see him here in a few weeks. But uh, running back recruiting CJ, a couple of spots. It's going to be a two-man class if they get the two they want. But those are really the three names right now um, that are at the top of the tongue of Texas fans. Yeah, they, they, they sure are. And, I mean, when uh, Kylan Deer really popped up on Texas radars when Tashar Choice went out to visit him in Mississippi uh, early February, I mean, just watching his tape, you saw why he was such a highly interesting prospect. I uh, mean, that kid can really fly when you get the ball in his hand. So uh, he was at Florida this past weekend, set up official visits for Florida State, uh, Florida as well through this, uh, this past weekend. So it'll be interesting to see just how far he wants to get, you know, out into the the west side of the SEC, you know, uh, when you talk about Ole Miss also being involved there, it looks like those will be the three teams that are really, really starting to hunt around for him until Georgia starts poking around in this recruitment as well. Uh, but he has talked about getting to Texas. I'm not sure if there's anything locked in. I I, I have yet to confirm anything with him. Uh, but to Shard Choice, anytime you give him an opportunity to get involved with the recruitment, good things tend to happen there. Another name to watch on the uh, – on the running back spot is uh, James Simon out of uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, who locked in a, a, a visit to Texas for the uh, for the April 20th spring game. He's a guy that Texas, again, a little bit quieter on as a result of Jordan Davison being one of those early guys in this class to really start showing interest and in, reciprocating that interest, I should say, with the Texas Longhorns. Uh, and obviously Ricky Stewart, as we know, has a June uh, 14th official visit. Uh, it'll be interesting. It's really those four guys with, I would say, James Simon kind of being one of those longer shots uh, with a Kylan Deer there. So uh, really interesting there, Jerry. And uh, one I, other – I want to mention ahead. here real quick. So I've been saying Ole Miss was probably a team to beat. I, I'm going to I'm gonna say I was – Things maybe have changed. When I said Ole Miss initially, I think that was probably correct. But the last time I said it, I think I was wrong. So I had a little birdie tell me uh, late last week that Alabama is going to be mm. the team to beat for deer long term in this. And if you look where Quitman, Mississippi is, that gum. I mean, you know, he, he may not even have to call long distance to, no. to if you use a landline to call a, a University of Alabama. OK, I mean, he's he's close. Uh, to Tuscaloosa over there. So I was told that that Alabama is highly, highly prioritizing deer and that he did grow up loving Alabama and that that scheme fit with Kalen DeBoer, the way, then that, that pin and pull run game is going to be really appealing to him at the end of the day. So let's, let's, I need to me, uh, I need to make sure we mention Alabama with a Kylan. Then yes, David Rawls's film is crazy. Look, you know how good you have to be as a running back to get to shard choice to go to Quitman, Mississippi. I mean, you know going in there, Ole Miss, Alabama, Georgia. I mean, you know going in there uh, that, okay, that's just how talented he was, that the shard choice, because that's not the easiest place to get to either. So no. that's how good this kid is. Yeah, but I was told Kalen DeBoer would struggle recruiting the Deep South. Jerry, what happened to that? I don't. And I, I, you know what I used to say to that. When has Alabama ever struggled recruiting the Deep South? <laughs> That's exactly. what I come back to that always was. was oh, hold on now. Uh, exactly. Remember, Baxter was not coming to Texas either. True. Okay. So here's what's interesting with Cedric Baxter's recruitment um, is be glad to me that Tashar Choice, great recruiter. Be glad Florida State was struggling under Norvell at that time. Yeah. If if Baxter came out last year and Norvell had turned that corner, and remember he Baxter was I, I always thought he would sign with Texas, but he was once committed to FSU. He went there twice during his senior season, by the way. If FSU was coming off this season when Baxter came out, would things be the same? I don't know. But that's the credit to and the same thing with Jarrett Gibson. You have to go in and recruit these guys 
Florida is a great place to recruit for a multitude of reasons. But one, until Miami takes the next step, we'll see. I think I think FSU might take a step back with the quarterback this year. And what happens with Florida after probably the next coaching change? State of Florida is a great place to recruit. It used to be you couldn't get anybody out of there when Spurrier, Bowden, and Miami had it rolling. Right. Then these kids went out and started seeing the world. And they said, ooh, these are these facilities at Georgia and Alabama and Tennessee, man, this is this sure is nice. Seven on seven really changed recruit the recruiting game in the Sunshine State, but great place to recruit. I want to see more guys offered from Florida. D line, DB, DBs, running back all day long. Off I'm with all. you. Hey, Jerry, there's one other prospect in the DFW area that locked in official visit to Texas that yep. it doesn't feel like Texas has been around with. For quite a while, you know, Dalen McCutcheon out of Lovejoy, the wide receiver, uh, uh, scheduled a, an official visit to Texas for June 14th through 16th. This is a familiar name. He was on campus for the pool parties back in July and, and August of last year. Didn't make it to a game. Texas kind of went quiet on him a little bit. Uh, over the, the winter, we saw Mike Norvell and Ryan Day make trips to Lovejoy in consecutive days. Right now, those are the two teams to keep a close eye on for his his uh, recruitment. It'll be uh, between Ohio State and Florida State. Notre Dame's another school to watch as well. His father has ties to the program up there. So those three schools to watch, plus Texas, who he did schedule an official official visit for. Uh, McCutcheon has told me several times that he loves what Texas does. Uh, and if you watch his tape, which I hope we, you know, I, I wish I'd, I'd texted uh, Matthew, get this one up. He is as smooth a route runner you will find in this class. Uh, might not have the, the quickest get off. Definitely doesn't have the, the highest top end speed, but in terms of route technicians, he is amongst the best in the state. And I've, I've been really impressed every time that I've watched him. So he's another wide receiver name to watch coming in for that June 14th weekend with Kelshawn Johnson and Andrew Marsh. That'll be Lovejoy's Dalen McCutcheon, uh, June 14th through 16th. Uh, Nick Brooks, uh, Ekim asked, and Burn Orange Horn asked, is Brooks not visiting Texas? I'm not sure if you're talking about Nick Brooks or not. Uh, Nick Brooks, I was sick. I was told Nick Brooks, if he makes it in, will probably be uh, April 20th for the spring game. Uh, I was probably the team to beat there. I mean, that, that's mm -hmm. just the reality. But I was told uh, by a couple of sources, those are kind of the wild cards. Nick Brooks, Juan Gaston, and Josh Petty to a certain extent. Texas likes all three of those out-of-state guys. More wild cards right now. Uh, I'll tell you, it's kind of, Nick Brooks kind of like uh, Kylan Deer. How good is Nick Brooks? I mean, Kyle Flood went to Des Moines, Iowa to see him in January. Okay, that pretty much gives up a day on the road in recruiting. So that's how talented Nick Brooks is. That's how much Texas likes his tape and his upside of where he can go. But Texas realizes that's a longer shot. Uh, but, again, if you're going to be a great national recruiting program, take your shot. I mean, uh, you have enough days on the road. Um, you, you can get it done as long as the coaches are willing to give up a day and travel to go see a singular prospect like that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he's – those guys, him, Juan Gaston, who's coming in June 14th through 16th. Josh Petty, we'll see. Okay, I would put Nick Brooks and Gaston in the real long shot category. Josh Petty out of the Atlanta area is interesting to me, though. He's going to supposed to be in March 22nd uh, with the California Power uh, Seven on Seven program. Program um, that Texas offer really appealed to mom. And the dad has family in Big Lake and San Angelo in Texas. Mm. So Texas, and this kid is a true academic kid. So the academic football combination, I think if the visit goes well on the 22nd and Texas sits down with him and says, okay, this actually would be a good fit. I could see an official visit happening there. I still think Texas would have work to do, but he's not a total just long shot. I think he's a wild card, but not a total long shot after this March 22nd video. We'll see. Hey, Jerry, also coming in that California power weekend of March 22nd with that 707 team is tight end Lincoln Cure, who Texas yeah. offered uh, not too long ago, probably about a week and a half ago or so. Uh, he, a really talented tight end prospect. Texas has already kind of circled who they've wanted to come in for official visits. Yeah. Is there a likeliness that we see a continual recruitment here? Or does it kind of depend on where things are? with, you know, a Nick Townsend, a Keyote Armstrong, and obviously where things continue to fall with uh, Emory Winston. I'll say this. I think Lincoln Cure is a tremendous prospect. He'll have to really impress Texas on March 22nd, right? They offered him. They know he's very good. But that in-person 
visit. It's going to have to really impress Texas because you got Amari Winston committed. Nick Townsend's big time. And Keody Armstrong is poor man's Darnell Washington. And when I say poor man's, I mean he's 6'5 instead of 6'7, right? Yeah. I mean, Keody's a very talented guy who should have a future in football. So when I say poor man's, Darnell Washington was a top 10, 15 type guy in the country out of Las Vegas. So uh, that's a compliment to Keody, even though some people would say, what do you mean by that? I'm, I'm saying how talented Keody is. So LinkedIn's really going to have to impress Texas because they have three really good tight ends all coming in June 21st through 23rd. I mean, if you remember – um, you know, last year, uh, Texas offered the kid out in Nebraska who ended up signing with Nebraska. He was a big time athlete. I can't even remember his name, Carter Nelson, maybe. Um, and Texas offered him, tried to get in on that, never really materialized. So, but this could be different because there's not an absolute okay. Everybody thought that kid was going to Nebraska at the end of the day. I think LinkedIn cures more wide open. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry, so, uh, Nick Brooks out of Cedar Rapids. I said Des Moines. Yeah. Regardless, Iowa. So uh, (laughs) uh, I I wanted to touch a little bit on 26, Jerry. There's we've talked about April 13th kind of being one of those weekends where the staff might try to get some of those 26 visitors on the campus. We know that they have four right now headlined by Will Griffin, the quarterback out of Tampa. But there's a couple coming in April 6th. And we've talked about Troy Hoon out of uh, California coming in as well. But another guy is coming in that we've found out over the weekend is Chris Henry Jr., the 2026 wide receiver, the son of Chris Henry, the former NFL wide receiver, uh, now at modern day. Yeah. Talented prospect, if you've seen his tape. Uh, is, is is it more so just getting him to campus and getting familiarized with the staff there? What's kind of that modern day to Texas continual pipeline looking like in the case of Chris Henry Jr.? Yeah, I think, you know, look, it's the modern day pipeline. It's the, the SoCal footprint. But um, Chris Henry, if Chris Henry's father gives Texas the stamp of approval, that's a really good thing, right? The offensive scheme, the quarterback room, um, you know, if, if that happens, that's going to be another big one for Texas. I would expect they'll both have great things to say after the Texas visit. That's, that's to me, is getting them on campus, setting up the future run uh, for Texas Sarkeesian with Chris Henry. Yeah. By the, way, by the way, the top two offensive linemen in the state in 26, uh, Euless Trinity, uh, C, I believe uh, CJ broke the news that he's coming in April 6th, then John Turntine coming in April 13th. So the two top 26 offensive linemen will be on campus next month as well. Definitely. And we have time for a couple more questions. Um, but And somebody said Burke owned Proctor. That was Brock Proctor's first real start in college football. He's He got better. Um uh, as the season went on. But, yes, that was Ethan Bar- Burke's coming out party. And that game alone started getting him on mock drafts. It's kind of funny how uh, that happens. But a little recap here. Okay, I, Jack W. Hey, guys, not sure. Saw Broncos safety room all played at Texas on the 2018 team. What do you remember about their recruitment's time at Texas and how does that affect recruiting? Man, this CJ, this could be tough for you. You were putting, you were putting on a high school cap and gown around this time, were you not? Yeah, I, hey, that was my uh, – I- I, I don't know. I was probably looking forward to Roundup more so than anything around 2018. I, I I didn't really start getting into recruiting probably until around 2019, 2020 yeah. even really. So that's new to me. I'm, I'm eager. So Brandon Jones is one of the best recruitments of all times out of Nacogdoches because Tex Ags made a documentary video and literally filmed him for months and months thinking he was going to A&M. And then Charlie Strong hired Jeff Trailer, And – Jeff Trailer uh, said, eh, I don't know if that's going to happen. And uh, <laughs> Jeff Trailer won that recruitment. At the time, that was both entertaining, but a huge recruiting win for Charlie Strong, Jeff Trailer in Texas at the time, because everybody had it chalked up to AM, including Texas for a while. Uh, and Jeff Trailer, that's when he proved to a lot of people he had recruiting chops in this game he's such a genuine human being and he knows every high school coach in the state and they all uh they all want to talk to him um jeff trailer so that was a big one um oh shoot i'm sorry chris henry passed away i did not know that sorry my fault on that chris henry senior former nfl receiver i did not know that um but uh you know uh caden stearns committed to lsu at one point in time huge recruiting flip for tom herman uh at the time uh, P.J. Locke, I believe, was headed to Oregon is where he was going to go. Texas came in there, got that one done. And he may have committed somewhere else, but I remember Oregon coming out of Beaumont Central there, went to see him. Uh, but uh, those three recruitments were all big ones for Texas. Caden Stearns was a really big one 
for Tom Herman at the time because that kind of flipped that momentum in that 18 class. And they ended up with Caden Stearns, Marvion Overshone, and B.J. Foster in that class, three of the top-ranked safeties in the country. Obviously, Overshone ended up at linebacker. Um, and then uh, uh, B.J. Foster was off to a great start in college, but I think before the injury bug really set in with him and kind of changed his mental uh, with the game of football. Hey, what, was, a, uh, what, what was Herman's biggest recruiting win? That's a great question. That had to be B. John Robinson, no? It is now. It definitely is now. At the time, Herman's biggest recruiting win. Can, I, can a, I give you three from, again, I was very young into yeah. this recruiting world. I didn't necessarily get fully in, in, immersed into covering it at this time when Herman was still here. But there were three that really came to mind at the time. Uh, the first was Jake Smith out of Arizona going in, mm -hmm. s stealing him from what felt like yeah. USC's graphs. Yeah. Uh, the other one was Tyler Johnson, who didn't necessarily pan out at Texas the way that Texas fans anticipated. He was, at the time, I believe, the highest Texas offensive line recruit in 10 years yeah. before, obviously, Kelvin Banks and DJ Campbell came and took that title from him. And then the third was Brew McCoy getting him to – Well, Brew, Brew, was pro Brew was the biggest recruit from a national perspective uh, um, because the whole Texas, USC – the whole thing that happened there, um, I, I think that he was the biggest one. He gained the most national headlines uh, for Texas with Tom Herman, without a doubt, uh, just because of the recruiting battle that was and how much it went back and forth and actually getting out of a letter, coming to Texas, nah, I'm going to second guess that, then I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to end up here. So he stayed in the news, recruiting news. He's remained on Texas message boards because of how his career has gone and that unfortunate injury last year. Uh, but Brew McCoy definitely was the biggest one nationally and most talked about. Yep. So that interesting world. I'm glad we're kind of to the point now where, you know, Sarkeesian's big victories are now legitimate five-star guys with the intent to come play at Texas and stay at Texas. Certainly helps that you're winning on the field as well. Uh, but, Jerry, last couple of Thank you for all that. that and Pac-Man Jones has custody of Chris Henry Jr. I did not know that. So oh, wow. I, I appreciate all those informing uh, that one. I did not know that. Wow. Uh, Tyler Johnson, David Keith Williams brings up a good Tyler Johnson coming out of Oak Ridge. Man, did he look great physically. Um, he checked a lot of boxes coming out of high school when you saw him, when you went to see him in person out of Oak Ridge. Um, just Jeff never materialized. You know, these guys, that physicality has got to follow at the power five level has got to follow. And that love for football has to follow all that talent. Um, and that's really what takes those guys to the next level because there's a lot of really talented guys. Uh, Tyler Johnson, had frame-wise, athletically, he had the goods, man. Yeah, he, uh, he had a pretty solid season last year for Houston. Brew McCoy, actually, to Brent Horn's, Horn's uh, question, uh, he is still at Tennessee. He was announced on the roster uh, for their spring football season coming up here next week as well. So he's still at Tennessee. He got a medical redshirt last year as a result of that gruesome leg injury, uh, which for anyone who saw it, I'm sorry because it wasn't. It wasn't pretty to watch. It was very unfortunate for him. Uh, but he will be entering year six with a red shirt and a medical red shirt under his belt so far. So hopefully it pans out. Hopefully he gets back on the field and maybe faces Texas somewhere down the line in the SEC. Uh, but, Jerry, quick recap. DeCorey yep. Moore, uh, uh, you know, kind of one of those unofficial top fours right now of Oregon, Ohio State, Texas, and LSU. Yep. We both believe that will be a Texas versus LSU battle through the – through the finish uh, with LSU currently having the leg up right now with his uh, verbal commitment. Texas is going to get him on campus for an unofficial in April. And again, to lock in an official visit sometime in June. Uh, do you have a gut feeling or is there anything new there? I know you mentioned some stuff at the top of the hour. Yeah. I mean, it, we'll see what happens. I think the real part of his recruiting is just going to get started here. April, May headed into June. So uh, we'll see. We'll see where it all goes. But if it's not Texas or LSU, I'll be surprised. I think there's a lot of connections to Austin and the University of Texas with that family. Um, and, you, you know, look, I'm not I, I, I'm not going to sit here and predict it uh, in the NIL day and age, but I think LSU has got a fight on their hands. I'll say that. Yeah, 100 percent. And then on the defensive edge spot, just one quick little recap. Hayden Lowe locked in an official visit June 14th through 16th in Texas will also be uh, receiving an unofficial visit from Smith Rogbo uh, in April as well. That's a really talented prospect out of Houston. Smith Rogbo uh, coming in. I, I've, I've missed it here. Where is it? Oh, April 6th. April 6th. Yeah, he's coming in April 6th. Uh, then Hayden Lowe, obviously defensive end out of Oaks Christian. 
uh, there in West Lake Village, California, coming in June 14th through 16th for an official and April 6th uh, for an unofficial. I'll tell you, hey guys, we're going to be talking. We're going to be talking about this coming up. We'll probably do another live stream next week. Uh, and actually, no, we won't. That's the first day of Texas spring practice. But we may have to record that one. But uh, I'll say this. April 6th visit weekend, even though it's not an unofficial visit weekend, that may have more highly ranked prospects than any weekend in June for yep. Texas. That, pro that one is loading up now. I mean, we don't have time to go through all the list, uh, names on the list. But, I mean, Kelshawn Johnson, Kalik Lockett, um, uh, gosh, Jonah Williams, right? Hayden Moore, Smith or Ogbo. I mean, you could just start looking at national rankings, whatever companies you look at, and that visit weekend. I mean, then you have the 26s. I mean, Troy Hunt and uh, and, and the big offensive tackle at Ulysses. But that April 6th weekend, uh, it, it's going to be a big one. I mean, it, it's going to be a big one. You're going to have you're going to end up with, I'm guessing 18 to 20 four star, five star ranked prospects combined that weekend in Austin. That's a big that's a big visit weekend. Yeah, that's I mean, the, the summer yeah. months are going to heat up quick. That's for sure, especially down here in Austin. The spring football kicking off one week from today. A lot of these visitors are going to start trickling in. We're going to see this already start coming in 10 days from now, that March 22nd weekend when you see California Power and the Knight Riders team come into the Texas uh, uh, facilities and kind of get a, a lay of the land one more time in front of the Texas coaching staff. So it's coming quick, and it's going to be exciting. Make sure that you head over to On Texas Football for all the latest. Jerry and I will be breaking any news that comes across us uh, on the recruiting front. And I, and I want to take a second again for Mark Saunders, the sole sponsor of the recruiting breakdown. Texas fans on this chat, give Mark Saunders and his Texas All-State agent team a call. I give those guys an opportunity to do great work. When it comes to protecting all your stuff, wouldn't it be great to have one place that protects it all? Here's some good news. Texas All-State agent Mark Saunders is the only insurance agent you'll need to keep tabs on protection for all your stuff, everything from your home, car and boat, to your motorcycle, RV, and ATV. Call Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders' office today, 512-218-8571. Are you in good hands? You'll be in great hands with Mark Saunders in his over 35 years of experience. Again, give him a call today, 512-218-8571. Thank you to Mark Saunders, Texas All-State agent. Uh, Mike G, thank you for the super chat. Uh, we're going to keep, we're going to do more of these live uh, recruiting um, shows, recruiting breakdown shows in the future. We want you guys to ask more questions. You want, I want y'all to call me out when my information's wrong. I love that. But I, we want to answer all your questions and have fun uh, with this recruiting uh, for the University of Texas because it's, it's, it's on full tilt. It, it, it's good right now. Yeah, it absolutely is. This is one of those times where it's fun to get, you know, you know, logging back into the site to cover recruiting and the team news, especially with the most anticipated spring football in Texas history, as Jerry likes to say. So it's coming up. This will be a lot of fun over the next couple of weeks, couple of months as well. So thanks for sticking in with us today. And any last words, Jerry, before we sign off? Uh, no, no, I'm good. Um, UT boys always going to give me a uh... He's going to give me the the jabs about saying Michigan would have beat Texas, but hey, we all have our opinions. We have fun, and I love you, T boy. Thank you for always uh, tuning in, all you guys. Keith David Keith Williams, a big red soda sponsor. I'll take it. I don't I'll need to that. drink it, but I'll take it. <laughs> well, good deal. Well, that'll right, do it for today. Here's a recruiting breakdown from uh, yep. myself, CJ Vogel, and joined by Jerry Hamilton, as always. Join us again, again on ontexasfootball.com. Until next time, we will see y'all and hook them.